So just recently, I got the opportunity to go out and watch my uncle's brother make fresh homemade maple syrup from scratch. I wanted to see what the process consisted of, so I went out and had a peek. This was a fairly simple design and setup. I basically drilled two holes about two inches deep and stuck these plastic taps in, ran the lines down into a uh, water jug and uh, put a cap on it. You can see that the sap comes out clear. So a lot of places that do large scale maple syrup uh, usually will tap a bunch of trees and they'll use some kind of a tubing, a water line, uh, some kind of a, a silicone tubing to run from the taps in the trees down to a central uh, holding container. Um, my uncle's brother didn't have that kind of setup. He's doing small scale. He only makes a couple gallons a year. So, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't get that involved. But my, my father has told me, uh, sometimes you'll travel up into the Amish country where the Amish live and uh, you'll see lines going all down through the woods for maple syrup. And uh, it's really interesting to look at. Nature is absolutely fascinating. There's little black bugs that'll show up and get into your syrup if you don't have a cap on it. And the woodpeckers know this. The woodpeckers will put holes in the tree just like this until the sap starts flowing. And then when the little black bugs show up to eat, so do the woodpeckers. Now my uncle's brother uh, is a very small operation. He just makes syrup for him and his friends and family. So he just taps a few trees. He boils the sap in these uh, turkey fryers. Uh, the, he said the larger turkey fryer evaporates a lot faster than the small one, but he puts uh, stuff around the bottom there to kind of conserve the heat and make it boil faster. And you basically just boil it down. He said it takes about 12 hours to boil down a, a thing of sap. Monitoring your temperature is very critical. Uh, too high and you'll evaporate off too much and you'll end up with a brick of sugar basically. Um, too low and it'll be way too runny and not have much flavor. So uh, I'm not sure of all the, the temperatures and stuff. I'm not a professional by any means, but <clears throat> making sure that you've got the right temperature uh, is, is crucial. Now some of the tools that can be used is this hydrometer. Uh, basically measures how much uh, moisture is still in your syrup. And it's got a, a mark there for you to, to know when you're right. And uh, then whenever it comes time to bottle it, he puts it in jars, um, sterilize the jar first, and uh, then you just dip the syrup out and put it right in there. Most syrup is bottled around 180. Uh, that ensures a sterile environment. Uh, when the syrup goes into the jar that hot, it uh, sterilizes and kills any bacteria that may be lingering around. Um, any higher than that, it tends to form uh, what they call sugar sand. It's a really fine um, crystal sugar, I guess, uh, like sand, basically. And uh, a lot of filters won't remove it. You have to you have to have some pretty fine filter material to get rid of it. And whenever it's bottled, uh, you just turn it over so that it can sterilize the cap. And it also helps to seal it in. Now, if you were going to upscale, you obviously would need a, a better setup than what my uncle's brother had. Uh, a lot of people use a evaporator made for maple syrup. It'll have three bays where the maple syrup will come from a warming tank down into the first bay and start to evaporate. And as it becomes more dense, it'll flow into the second bay where it'll evap evaporate even further, becoming more dense and moving into the third bay, where there's usually a thermometer that will tell them exactly what the temperature is. And then they can pull syrup off until they drop below that temperature 
and that, that tells them they've got the right consistency in their syrup. Now this is the sugar sand that I was telling you about. It's not harmful to eat, it's just undesirable to have a sediment in the bottom of your jars. And without filtration, uh, that'll be in there. Now this right here is a press filter that a larger corporation would use uh, to remove the tiniest of sand. And uh, basically it just presses the syrup through some really fine micron filters. Uh, don't ask me the the uh, specs on it I have no idea <laughs> I'm just showing you kind of an example of how that uh, a larger corporation would filter theirs you can see there's there's quite a bit of sugar sand in it like I say it's created right around I believe it's 190 it starts to form the uh, crystals that make up sugar sand so that's why we try to keep it lower now this is a um, another filter process if you're you're a smaller scale uh, you can use like a filter sock and these come in different uh, different levels of uh, micron or, or uh, fiber size. I plan to try to tap trees myself in the future and, and make maple syrup. Um, but right now I've got too much on my plate so just getting to watch him and see how he did it was a real treat. Man, that beats the heck out of Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, guys, there you have it. Fresh, homemade maple syrup in a jar. This stuff is absolutely delicious. You don't even know how delicious it is until you try it. Uh, the stuff from, from the store don't even hold a candle to how good this is. <clears throat> it's a little bit more runny than... Uh, and stuff from the store but the stuff from the store has additives and corn syrup to thicken it thickeners preservatives this right here is straight out of the tree onto your table man let me tell you what oh my gosh it's so good you don't even know how how good the maple taste is in this unbelievably good mm, that tastes like ice cream like oh it's so good anyway that's the process that i observed and i'm going to try to make some of this next year and i'll be filming it so if you like this sort of stuff homesteading uh beekeeping um, product reviews small business uh, videos you know all that kind of different stuff i'm going to be making a ton of them i've got so many different plans historical stuff like and subscribe we'll see you later